our purpose is likewise becoming from the seed of who we are, that seed of potentiality, to into someone who has realized that potential and stepped into it. And the beauty of it is that unlike, let's say, an animal or a plant, with us, it's a never-ending journey. You can never say that you've arrived. You've developed yourself. That's it. I'm Adrian Starks, known as Mr. Purpose. I'm a speaker, voice narrator, comic card and superhero fanatic, book lover, martial artist, health enthusiast, and just a fellow human seeking purpose. Join me and our guest as we navigate the chaotic journey of life of what I like to call the human mess to discover how we can craft and share our purpose. There's no single path, but together we'll explore the diverse perspectives to uncover the tools to help you shape your purpose your way. Let's get it and let's create. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Your Purposeful Life podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. And today we are going to be talking about how to step into your greatness as a man and create epic legacy and finding the purpose. Whoa. So maybe as a man right now, you're feeling like you're not at your best. It could be income, success or impact or even just personal satisfaction wherever you are. Do you feel that pressure to be more of a man than you are right now and you're not able to do it at this time? Have you lost connection with maybe your purpose? Well, today we have someone who's going to help you get that back. We have a special guest on, and her name is Jay Tepley. Jay, welcome to the podcast and community. Hello. um, Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's great to have you on. Let's talk a little bit more about who you are and why you are here, because you are creating some major changes in men's lives. So you're an author, you're an entrepreneur, international speaker, and spiritual mentor. And over the past 20 years, listen to this, everyone. Yeah. Over the past 20 years, her new era superhero program showed many men across the globe the path to increased revenue, success, impact, and personal fulfillment through helping them connect with their sole purpose. Here's another thing about Jay that I really love. Her charity work supporting mental health through lightsaber training, which we will talk about a little bit later. She's got a lightsaber with her today, has been featured in The Guardian, The Jeremy Vine Show, and BBC One. Whoa. So. Jay, let's get right into this here. What do you feel is a problem right now with men across the world and what are they facing? I think men are facing a lot of challenges right now. And in my opinion and in my observation, our society just just doesn't do enough to support men, especially young men who are just getting into society, who are just finding their footing and their message and their gift. And there is a lot of emphasis on helping women, which is great because, of course, uh, it's a great initiative. But I just think for men, everyone assumes that men should be all right as they are. So instead of helping them achieve that greatness, they're basically left to their own devices. But even more so, they get harshly criticized whenever they fail. And yeah, there is no support and no proper framework for them to get things right. And in my opinion, women are actually better off without... Um, if, if we talk about two categories, men and women without guidance... I would say women are better off in most cases because they have this really strong intuition. The way their mind works, they can figure things out because they can sense what they should be doing. And with men, Mm -hmm. men actually need uh, an exact framework, a set of steps Mm -hmm. to operate within, to get things right. And because our society doesn't really provide that for them. In Mm -hmm. ancient ancient times, there were rites of passage, there were rites of passage into manhood. So men knew what to do to become a true Mm -hmm. member of the society and then what to do to become this greatest version of themselves. Now, when that was taken away, many men are basically lost and and depressed. And this is what I see all around. So to me, this is the greatest problem right now. That is a big problem. I like how you said too, how society just assumes that men are okay, that we've got it together. And then we'll eventually, if we don't, we'll figure it out. And I believe that's a big problem because a lot of us have not figured it out and and we're vulnerable just like anyone else. And I think if you look at social media, not to use that as a, a precursor to how men are going to be, but if you look at all the examples 
of some of the celebrities, the men who have passed away or have left this planet because of arising issues that they were unwilling to really talk about publicly, maybe because of pressure. And I know that society doesn't support men enough. And this is an an ongoing concern. But here's an interesting thing I want to bring up here. You have a quote. And this quote is, it was on your website, and I had to pull it off and say it here. Our purpose is a reason we were put on this earth. It represents who we are, where we're going, and the value we want to create for ourselves in the world. It's where we find our meaning, fulfillment, and significance in our lives. And this was by Tommy Breedlove, the author of Legendary. When I read that quote, Jay, I thought automatically of the Scottish philosopher named Thomas Carlyle. And he said that a person without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder. Yes. And and thinking of purpose here, there are some things that I found out about about men across the planet who have not figured out their purpose or they've lost it. They haven't reshaped it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And one phrase that's going about right now is suffering in silence. That's a big yeah. topic for men. Why do you feel or what is your take on the suffering in silence? Why what can we do to resolve that issue of suffering in silence? Right. Well, you probably know another famous quote that most people live a life of quiet desperation. Henry David Thoreau, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, which is very similar to what you just said. And yes, of course, because when it comes to mental health, uh, spiritual issues, emotional issues, it's difficult for for most people to put them into words to begin with and mm-hmm. much more to put them into words publicly because mm-hmm. of the fear of judgment. Because, you know, if you become vulnerable like that, people think, well, you know, if, you, if I open up, someone could use that against me. Someone could take advantage of me. So on top of having this emotional issue, I'm going to have a whole host of issues <laughs> <laughs> related to people, say, laughing at me, not taking me seriously, uh, treating me as someone inferior, and things like that. And so, of course, suffering in silence seems almost like a better alternative to living in ridicule. And so, for men especially, because for women, it's a whole... Um, the whole fabric of how women interactions are based, it's them talking to each other, sharing emotions, sharing memories, sharing thoughts. And of course, men do that as well to a degree, but um, there is a strong sense of competition. You know, when Mm -hmm. a group of boys are talking, none of them wants to be seen as that weak one. They want to be seen as cool. And it's hard to... uh, reconcile it in your mind, being cool and having an emotional issue. And so, of course, there is a strong desire to cover it up, to gloss it over, so then you can show yourself up as as a superhero of sorts. So this is why uh, this is why it happens. I don't think it's a bad thing per se, because uh, the desire to be better, which lies at the core of that, so which fuels that issue, the desire is itself is good, is just being channeled in the wrong way. And so I think the way out would be to A, understand and appreciate, acknowledge and honor that desire, because it's great. We need to be better. If we are not striving towards a worthy goal, if we're not improving ourselves, this is where apathy and depression kicks in. But we just need to channel it in the right avenue and use it to our advantage. So having this desire, embracing this desire and thinking, right, well, I actually stand for something a lot greater because this is what we need as human beings to really feel worthy. We need to feel part of something greater than ourselves. We need to stand for something that truly matters. And this is why people, for example, join all sorts of sometimes silly organizations just to get a glimpse of that feeling. But if we align our values, our attitudes with what truly matters, with what is really valuable, what it does is that your mind kind of automatically goes into that mode where you understand that you bring so much value into the world 
that those issues don't define you anymore. And so you're okay sharing them because they're just such a small thing. They may be holding you back, but they're not who you are and you can't be judged by them. And so it creates a very powerful shift in perspective. Yeah, speaking of perspective here, a lot of it that I'm hearing is basically the social phobia that a lot of men have and how they're like being compared to other men and am I strong enough or am I weak? And yeah. Wow, am I so man much enough? <laughs> am I man enough? There's so much pressure and it's like, wow, no no wonder why there's, you know, just a rising rate of men across the world that are suffering in that science that we talked about. So we we you really gave a great example of understanding our desires and how these desires help propel us and take us outside of that that need to fit in this little box of what they of what society thinks a man should be. But more importantly, we're a part of something greater. I love that. What is the most common mistake, Jay, that you find that people make, maybe men, but just people in general, when they're trying to find their purpose? Oh, I love this question. Thank you. So Mm -hmm. the most common mistake is people think, and it's not their fault because it's fueled by the whole industry of coaching, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Their mistake is in thinking that their purpose equals their career choice. And mm. so you have all sorts of diagrams where you fill in you know, the circles and the ikigai, for example, is, is a great <laughs> example of that, you know, what the world needs, what, what do you do, all of this. And so the problem with that is if you do what you're already good at, your soul is going to hate that. Uh, because if you are good at something, it means that your soul has already mastered that skill, that ability, whatever it is. And our purpose is not a career. This is why if you get it wrong, if you think, oh, okay, this is uh, this job that I should take to live my purpose, it's going to burn out and it's going to, sometimes it's going to hit really hard. Like people get really depressed and mentally destroyed when they discover like, oh, I thought this was my purpose. I gave it my all and now I just feel empty because our purpose is not the career choice. Our purpose is becoming the greatest version of ourselves. And if it sounds a bit vague, Let's just look at nature because it makes it really easy to understand. So if you look at literally anything that exists around you, let's say you find an acorn in a forest and you look at it and you think, what is the purpose Mm. of it? And now it's really obvious because you think, well, the purpose of it is to become a small oak and to grow and become the greatest oak that it can possibly be. And same, you Mm -hmm. know, if you find, say, a little kitten or a little dog, what is their purpose? Their purpose is to become the best example of their species and pass it on, right? So we are not exempt from that rule. We don't exist in some vacuum. We are part of the world that exists around us. And so our purpose is likewise becoming from the seed of who we are, that seed of potentiality, to into someone who has realized that potential and stepped into it. And the beauty of it is that unlike, let's say, an animal or a plant, with us, it's a never-ending journey. You can never say that you've arrived, you've developed yourself, that's it, you know, you're done. And so you keep going always for as long as you're alive, and that fuels you more than anything else. Now, that is our actual purpose from the universal standpoint. But then The more you become, I call it your true self, you know, your greater self that you have embedded in your soul, in your heart. The more you become that, the more you see how you can apply that. So it's like climbing a mountain. You know, at the beginning, this is where many people really trip over it because they think, okay, so I want to live my purpose. Uh, Let's just fill out some diagram and let's find out what career is out there. But imagine climbing a mountain. And right at the bottom, you see, what can you see? You can maybe see a forest. Maybe there is a little hut there, or maybe there is a river. And so you make decisions based on what you see, based on those bearings. But if you climb a little bit higher up, you can see maybe another mountain. 
maybe another forest. And you think, oh, actually, there is a lot more to it than I thought. And if you climb even higher up, you say, oh, wow, there is a village over there. There is uh, like another lake. There is something else. And now you're aware of those things so you can take them into consideration. So in our life, the higher up you go in terms of your mental and spiritual development, the more things you become aware of, the more data you have to work with. And now you can make a much more informed decision in terms of how to apply yourself in the world. But it always comes second. So your purpose first is becoming the greatest version of you. And secondly, looking for ways to express that out in the world. Love it. Well said. And the last part, looking for ways to express it out in the world, absolutely fantastic because that brings our fulfillment when we know that we're actually yes. trusting that process and we're allowing it to be shared with the world. I love also too, Jay, how you talked about the careers not being a purpose because many people think that, well, if I don't have this career, then I'm a failure. Then I am not doing my part. Then I'm not living up to the expectations of, once again, other people. But reality is that you can still have a career- yeah but still in the same time have a purpose behind that, behind that career, but you're actually focusing on the purpose. And that is something I think that we need to start doing. So yes. with this idea of the purpose of life in general, and I love it because you know the show is your purposeful life. So I was like, I have to have you on. Of course, that makes <laughs> sense. Why did you choose, speaking of purpose, Jay, why did you choose this purpose, this willingness to help people, men in general, discover their purpose, their passions, and to ignite what we talked about earlier, success, their finances, their personal fulfillment. Why choose this? What got you on this journey? Right. There is a quote from one of my books called The Light Witch Chronicles, when someone asked a similar question, and the answer was, how do you choose your weapon? You don't. It chooses you. Mm, okay. Okay, and, and we'll so, make sure we put that link in the in the show to the the what's the name of your book again? Oh, it's the Lightwish Chronicles. Um, Perfect. There we go. There you go. Very nice. All right. Yeah, it's a book um, about finding your purpose, actually. So mm. uh, we can talk about it later if you like. So yeah. uh, with the purpose, it's not something that your ego mind chooses as an outfit. It's an expression of you as a person. So likewise, again, going back to an acorn, it doesn't choose to be an oak. It is an acorn so that it will grow into an oak and nothing else. It's not going to become a palm tree or birch or anything else because that is their structure. That is the way it's designed. So with us, you're created the way you're created. And so the best thing you can do is to find the truest, fullest, and most powerful expression of it. And the closer you get to it, the more your personal power flows, and the more you become a very grounded person in, in general, because this is what actually makes you unshakable. And this is what makes you immune to things like anxiety or depression, because your mind just stops functioning in a way that would support that. And this is why, for example, for me, you know, my purpose, the way I define it in words, is being a light that helps others see. And of course, an expression of it, I could have taken different paths. But I think what I'm doing and teaching men, leading them to uh, teaching men, leading them to their greatness is the purest, the fastest path to achieve that purpose from the standpoint mm. of where I currently am. So mm. I hope this answers your question. I like how you said that your weapon, you don't choose your weapon, your weapon chooses you. So I, I've never heard of that one before. I'm like, okay, that makes sense now. I mean, the things choose us to express themselves through, and then it's up to us to trust that process and allow it to be expressed, which is a yeah. bout of courage, I believe. Speaking of courage, you talk about the new super, superhero program and helping people, particularly men and with their purpose, what should the man of the new era be aware of to keep winning, Jay? Oh, I love this question. All right. So just to recap for people who may not be aware of this, 
We have entered a new era of human consciousness. You might have heard about the era of Aquarius, as some people refer to it. But essentially, it's like a new cosmic seasons because a season because we have just like we have seasons on Earth, there are also big cosmic seasons, tide changes, if you will. And so right now we've left the previous era, the old era, which was all about watery type of energy. And by watery type of energy, I mean soft, uh, compliant, touchy-feely. And you can notice that if you look back and the attitude of people was very different, let's say, towards society, towards authorities, towards anything. It was the era of, I do what I told, I just follow, say, authorities, I just follow things blindly, I don't ask questions. And the new era is very different. So the previous energies, uh, pr the previous era's energy was female in the universal terms. Okay, it was the yin polarity, the lunar polarity, and this is why the lunar polarity follows what is already there. Think about it like water. Water would not fight back; it would fill in whatever vessel you give it, and become the shape of whatever you put it in. And so the previous uh, era was likewise about secret types of influence, about people doing things behind the scenes, in the shadows, in the darkness. And the whole dynamic was, if you want to win, follow the rules, but then do something behind the scenes. Mm. And you can see how people wear, you know, the gray cardinals, uh, a good example of that. This is how people were winning back then. And the problem uh, with the uh, current way of self-development is that it keeps teaching you things the way that they were taught for the last 2000 years. And so the new era is actually very different and we can see the inklings of it already. So instead of everything being secret, everything gets exposed and things that before were unthought of are being talked about openly right now. Everything accelerates, so things are moving a lot faster, happening a lot faster. We have lots of technology popping up, AI and things like that. And it forces people, the energy of time forces people to A, become more rational than emotional, and B, think and move faster. And so the main thing to keep in mind if someone wants to win in the new era, is that the old ways are not going to work. Just as we understand the old ways of business, I'm just going to give a really crude example that is super easy to understand. Imagine if right now someone opened the business and they had no website, no email, no online presence. They would just open the shop somewhere and simply sit there looking, waiting for customers to come in and like right. zero technology. How far would it go? Probably not far, not far at all, right? So, up. yeah. So imagine this, uh, but in a weather scenario where someone tries to operate on the same kind of mindset that was in use all those years back, but not anymore. So right now, especially for men, the thing to understand is the new era has a masculine energy. So. You might have seen that slogan, the future is female. It's not true. The future is male. Mm. And we need to embrace it. And the faster we do it, the faster we will win. Because the new era is about being rational, not so much emotional, uh, being technically and um, computer savvy, and thinking of new opportunities. So looking at the world with fresh eyes, asking questions, and you can see how the new generation, to the shock and horror to the, of the previous ones, starts challenging things and asking right. questions, sometimes right. uncomfortable questions. And they're like, ooh, you shouldn't be asking, right? Yeah. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the core of what you need to understand, moving and embracing responsibility for your reality. Super important. Super, super important because in the previous era, in the era of water, it was like, it's the society's duty to look after me. It's the government's duty to look after me. I'm just a, or 
just life in general is happening to me. I'm just a poor little victim of my circumstances and I can do the best, you know, within the confines of whatever system is created for me by them. Whereas in the new era, if you keep that mindset, it's going to backfire big time because the energy of the new era kind of forces you to embrace personal responsibility for your life, for your reality, hence the manifestation techniques, hence the reality bending, because the man of uh, the new era is a creator of realities. So that is really love important it. to keep in mind. Love it. Love it. The man of the new era is a man that, that creates their own realities. Love it. I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna go he's a new era superhero. Yes, New Era Superhero. I'm going to give you another quote here from Abraham Lincoln, speaking of men. He said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So Absolutely. if we're creating things, then that's how we predict our future. And this New Era Superhuman, I just love it. Just love what you're doing here. It makes me excited. So Thank you. You're welcome. Many entrepreneurs and men in business tend to hit a plateau at one point. And yeah. we've seen this, right? Mentally, emotionally, and financially. What is the best way out of that for them? an action step. One one step they can they can start doing to get that foot out of that little stuck position. You ask the best questions. So Thank you. I'll give you an example uh, from my writing practice. And so I wrote about eight books, nine books uh, on Amazon. And there is one common pattern that I noticed when I was writing. And that is sometimes, you know, you sit down and it just flows. You just write. And then suddenly you get stuck and you hit what is called a writer's block. And so it's the same thing that those people are experiencing, except it's not in writing. It's, uh, it's an entrepreneur's block, let's say, or a fitness block, right? Or a mental block. But I believe that the underlying issue, underlying cause is the same. And that is... Every time that I hit a plateau and I couldn't move forward was because I was listening to my ego instead of my heart. And the Whoa, ego that's would big. always take you only so far and get stuck every single time. So what I've discovered with writing, the easiest way to get out of that block was to delete the last two paragraphs and start anew. And so if you feel that you are stuck, it could be that you've been listening to your ego for too long and now the ego is a bad, bad navigator. So it took you to a blind alley somewhere. What you need to do is to retract a couple of steps back and look for a new direction. And to do that, I would say the easiest way to do it is to get a mentor because they can give you an objective view of where you are, of what is happening. Because once you are in that state, obviously there are lots of blind spots and it's not impossible to get out of it yourself, but sometimes it can just take a lot of time. So ideally you want to find someone who you trust to have a look review what is happening right now and where your ego has taken you and then say right okay so you just need to undo this couple of things and start moving in a different different direction that is actually aligned with your soul purpose love it and speaking of mentors jay how can our listeners today reach out to you and learn more about your superhero new era superhero program and the things that you're doing across the world for people helping them discover their purpose. The easiest way is to reach through social media because I'm very active on social media. So you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere that you can, basically TikTok as well. So just put a new era superhero in your in the uh, social media of your choice and you can find me there and of course you can also uh, reach out through my website which is new era superhero.com love it and for the question of the hour here i always ask my guest jay all right what does living a purposeful life mean to you it means being at peace and being able to serve the world greatly to make a true difference there you go. And this is a person that knows their purpose. Jay, it's been wonderful having you on the show. 
And it's been wonderful talking to you. Love your questions. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Your Purposeful Life. And I'm your host, Adrian Starks. Download this podcast on your platform of choice. Join me on my social media channels and be a part of the Your Purposeful Life community. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that like button with a purpose. Come on now. Remember, your human mess is the process. Let's help you shape your purpose your way.